Hi there, my name is Alex Schleif, and I work as a developer advocate for Gronium team for Oracle Labs at Oracle. I'm very happy to see all of you here, and this is a session at Go to Chicago, and we're going to talk about maximizing performance with Gronium. Without further ado, let's jump into the slides and then proceed to the demos and to the questions. Maximizing performance with GraalVM. Before we start, this is a technical session, so please do not make any foregoing business decisions based on the contents of this presentation. Thank you. GraalVM, I hope you've heard of it. It's a high-performance polyload virtual machine that can support many languages. It naturally supports the JVM languages, such as Java and Scala and Kotlin and Groovy and Clojure. And we also have support for JavaScript and Python and Ruby and R uh, and WebAssembly and LLVM Bitcode for native languages. It's a, it's a polyglot VM, so it can execute program in all those languages. And it also wants to be higher performance. So at the heart of the Gravian project is the Gravian JIT compiler that can both optimize the Java bytecode for the JVM-based languages and also plays a vital part for optimizing the, the, the other languages we support at runtime. So for Java applications, Gravium can offer you two ways to execute them. It can run with the JIT compiler in the normal JIT mode, which is very similar to what you get when you run your Java application on the open JDK build. Right? You use the Java utility from the distribution, and you just uh, specify which classes you want to execute, and it runs and it, it starts the JVM, the Java Hotspot Virtual Machine. But in the GraalVM's case, the top tier optimizing compiler is replaced with the GraalVM compiler. And that can give you an immense performance boost. And there is also an option to compile applications ahead of time. And we'll cover that in the second part of this application, of this presentation. Why would you like better performance? Right? Chris Newland here on Twitter says that when his developers are writing code that, that should be performance aware of the performance implications, right? there should be no functional or object orientation uh, features used. Right? The code should be as simple as possible because it needs to be fast. And of course, this, this sentiment makes, makes us a little bit sad at the Gralmium team. Because as the team that creates a runtime, we think that the abstractions for, uh, for, for your code should not come with the performance overhead. Right? The code that, is, that looks like the code that you would want to write and maintain, right? functional code using objects, calling methods, should behave as well as the code that you manually optimize to be low level. And Gravium makes this uh, much closer to the reality thing that you would expect. It's fairly easy to, to check it out. Right? So you get started with Gralium. You go to the downloads page on the website, gralium.org slash download, and then you download the archive, and then you unpack this archive, and then you put the Gralium on the path, which is what you do with, with, with any uh, JDK distribution nowadays. Right? And then you export uh, Gralium home, and you can also point Java home to the same directory. Uh, and then you run your applications normally using the Java utility, which will be in the uh, bin directory of GraalVM. And this is a very compatible mode, right? It runs hotspot VM, so it runs the, the, the same garbage collection that you would run when running OpenJDK, but the top tier optimizing JIT compiler, right? The, the, the component that makes your application go fast is replaced with the GraalVM compiler and enabled by default. So that makes your application faster. How much faster, you ask? Reasonably faster. So if we, uh, here I would like to point out uh, a benchmark suite called Renaissance. But it's a, it's a newer benchmark suite that consists of individual benchmarks uh, from different projects. You can see there are some stream-based benchmarks and some Rx extension, reactive extremes extensions. Uh, there are some Neo4j. Uh, analytics, which is a very, very memory heavy workload. And there, there was some Scala, dot is the Scala compiler, and there was some Akka, right? Those are newer libraries, which were not as popular maybe 10, 15 years ago when 
when some other benchmark suits were created. So these would, would re resemble the modern Java code that you write and use much more than maybe some other benchmark suits. So take a look at that. And here on the graph, you can see that on average, GraalVM outperforms the normal OpenJDK setup uh, approximately by one third, which is, which is a, a non-trivial result. And before we get into the benchmark uh, analysis, uh, I want to tell you this, right? So more benchmarks are always a good idea, right? The more benchmarks you run, the more benchmarks you analyze, the better you can understand what are the implications for the real world are. Of course, you have to be very careful with conclusions, right? You cannot just extrapolate from a single benchmark because that doesn't make much sense, right? And in this number, like 30% faster, does it mean that it will be this much faster on your workload? No, it's not. It could be, it could be lower bound, it could be an upper bound, it could be like a, a, a number uh, that doesn't mean much for your particular workload. But what it means, it means that you should absolutely take a look at that. It's a non-trivial performance boost. So you should, you should get interested about this and then you should try GraalVM on your code or like a sample code that resembles your code. Because only then you will see the results that you can get. Having said all that, I'm going to show you another benchmark. I'm going to show you another micro benchmark, which hopefully will illustrate the point of uh, being able to optimize more high-level high abstract code better than other compilers. So it's a micro benchmark, so don't take it, don't take it super seriously here. Uh, and it's fairly small. What we do? is we compute the hash code of, of, of some fields. So in the raw version, we manually optimize it to use low level math. So we know that this, those are just primitive fields, so we can just uh, multiply them by, by, by a constant and shift them and add them together to get an integer hash code. Now the normal version, how you and I would write this code normally in our applications, would be just to call objects.hash function and pass all the data in it. If you don't know what it does, it creates a varrox of the objects, and then it calls to erase hash code with that array. That array is checked for null, and then iterated, and the actual mathematical uh, operation it's kind of the same. So we integrate the array and we multiply by three and one, and then we add the values together. And then we return that. So the code is doing the same thing, but object.hash is much more abstracted away version of the same operation, right? There is an array creation, there is a, a null check, the reiteration of the array. Can GraalVM run this code with a similar performance as the raw version? Let's check it out. Let's check it out. I have a terminal here, and I can tell you that, uh, oh boy, which Java, that my Java comes from a GraalVM distribution. And you can see that this is a uh, Java 8 based version, right? So it, it is based on the Java Hotspot VM coming from GraalVM. And I will run this benchmark uh, with Java minus jar, target benchmarks, uh, jar and then what we do objects hash right uh, we run this is a micro benchmark so it will run for 20 seconds uh, I don't want to claim that this is a rigorous result or a rigorous performance uh, evaluation environment though it runs on a particularly beefy machine which uh, not the super large but it has like threads and it has a lot of RAM memory and so on so what I want you to look at is the numbers here, right? So what we see is that the score, the score for the abstracted version is very similar to the score for the raw version, right? They're practically uh, equal, uh, especially given the, the, the score error for uh, such a short benchmark run, right? What it means that the GraalVM, the code that is more abstracted, the code that you want to maintain in your code base, performs the same as the code that you manually optimize. This means that you don't have to get rid of the abstractions in your code. 
which is a very, very good benefit. I won't, I won't run this benchmark on any other JVM. I don't want to start a benchmark war here, but I would just want to tell you that the, normally, if you run this on OpenJDK, you will see a much lower score for the abstracted version. Right? It will regress as you introduce new abstractions. So this is, this is, this is an illustration of the abstractions coming without performance penalty uh, when you run your code on GraalVM. Let's go back to the slides quickly. Right? Uh, let's talk about ahead of time compilation versus running with a jet. So ahead of time compilation is an interesting concept. It can give you some performance benefits, but you need to understand what we're talking about. So normally, when we talk about JIT, the JIT setup is optimized for peak throughput. So when the code is warmed up and everything is compiled, then it will run absolutely as a beast. It will run really, really good. And obviously, the, the tail latency will be quite good because the peak throughput is, is, is really nice. So the AUT optimizes in a different dimension. So when you compile your code ahead, code ahead of time, you cannot apply all the speculative optimizations that JIT has access to. Right? So you might not see the peak throughput as great, but you will get a better startup speed because you don't need to warp things up. You get a much better memory footprint because you don't have to allocate memory for the JITing purposes. And you can get a much smaller packaging numbers. Luckily, you don't have to choose with the GraalVM because GraalVM offers you both choices. There is a, a way to run it with a JIT, and there is a way to run as a head of time compiled application. There is a utility called native image, and you can feed your classes into that, and then it will crunch the classes, compile them, and output the platform dependent binary for you. It will run under the closed world assumption, which is very important. Right? It will ask you to provide all the bytecodes that will ever be executed on the Graal, on, on, in this application. This will make possible to have aggressive optimizations that will otherwise mm, will require some speculation. Right? It will also disable the loading new classes at runtime because it needs to see all the bytecode that will ever run. That will allow you, us to remove the JIT facility and when you start your application, not allocate memory for JIT whatsoever bringing the memory footprint much lower. I think I've seen the examples of native images, Graalium native images running with as low as like consuming four megabytes of RAM, which is a great result. So what happens in background is it takes your application, it takes your libraries, it takes the classes from JDK that you're using, it takes the GC and some other runtime implementation bits from the project uh, within Graalium. And it will take all the Java code, initialize the classes, create the object graph, compile the code, take the snapshot of the heap, and then write it out in the native binary. Let me show you how it works. If I go back to my application here, uh, I, can, I can show you a, a, different, a different example. So I hear, what I have here is a Micronaut application. It's a Micronaut application. It's a Micronaut is a web framework for applications. So what we can do here is we can have a controller, and our controller will simulate business logic by computing prime numbers. Right? What it will do, it will just uh, accept the HTTP queries, right? and then it will compute the prime numbers, and then it will return the, the sequence of uh, integers or longs back to, to the browser. This is what we're going to see. And I'm going to start this application uh, in my terminal right here, right? So you can see this is a normal uh, application, and I've built it before. So what I can do, I can run it in my with my with my Java, right? And so just no cheating. See which Java? This is still my Java, and I also can show you that my native image utility sits in the same thing in the same distribution, right? I can. It's, it's available by the same path. So what I can do now, I can do Java minus jar, build slash lips, micronaut example, all jar. It's an application, it starts, uh, it starts, it's a local host, it takes uh, a little bit more than one and a half seconds to start, and I can do, if I split, uh, split my screen, I can curl, right, I can curl the, Localhost, uh, I will curl the 
localhost uh, 8080 primes and say we'll compute the primes from 2 to 100 to 10, from 2 to 10, or from 2 to 100. Very good, and we see the primes numbers back. So this is the application, and if we if we try the the memory usage of this application GPS, uh, we see that twenty eight three nine. If we see the memory requirements for this, uh, then with the small utility twenty eight three nine. You can see that it takes approximately without any configuration. It takes approximately four hundred megabytes of RAM, which is quite a bit for the for the small application. Right. So what I can do here is I can of course uh, stop this application, and I have compiled this uh, application into a platform binary using native image by using native image command and feeding it the uh, the jar file, right. It, it is a 60 megabyte file, which is not uh, as little as a jar file, but it doesn't depend on the JVM, right? So I can do micronet, exa uh, micronet example, right? You can see that this micronet example file is linked across the to the operating system libraries. So what, I'm going to run this now. I'm going to run this micronet example, and it starts, and it starts. You can see in a whooping 22 milliseconds and I can do the coral thing again right and it runs and it responds really fast because it doesn't require warming up uh, and if I look at the at the uh, at the memory right at the memory command for the micronaut uh, process then you can see it's 47 megabytes this is a, as a spectacular result and I can put this file into a very minimal docker image uh, and have the container that will start almost instantly and, and have these startup times and memory consumption of, of services written in Go or Node.js or similar languages. So this is a great way to run your applications. Here's we, we have a graph that, that shows the difference between uh, the AOT uh, execution mode and with the JET. And you can see the main thing is you saw the differences in memory consumption, but also the CPU consumption. When you run in the JIT mode, it has quite a bit of CPU usage on the startup and warm up. Gravium Council is a large ecosystem and a growing ecosystem of libraries that support native images, including Spring Boot, where the active work is happening to support Gravium native images. And the benefits that it gives you are almost universal across all supported frameworks. So if it uses native image, it will start up really fast. And it will have a much slower, much lower memory footprint than running on, on, on JDK. Gravium is a large project. There are several parts which are production ready and several parts like other language support, uh, which is more experimental. So uh, if you use something in the production ready column, right, Java or JVM languages, or JavaScript or Node.js or the native image bits or the tooling, uh, like profiler from Visual VM, you can do that, and people are running that in production, and it is stable and mature. Right? The other components, like running Python code, might be less, less, less so. Twitter is using the compiler, uh, Gradient compiler in production for the Scala microservices. Oracle Cloud uses uh, Gradient for improving performance of their certain services. Uh, Nvidia. Uh, collaborated with with it for on the language that uh, uses GraalVM to expose GPU kernels uh, on top of GraalVM. There is of course an Oracle product based on GraalVM called Oracle GraalVM Enterprise Edition that you can look into if you would like to. And then of course what you can do now is you can check out and see the the project, follow us, ask us questions, and participate in the GraalVM ecosystem. Thank you.